Tis that is so. Yeah. So wanted. He loves it. He loves it. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Your Call to Action, as well as on our YouTube channel. We are here today with Kao Kombucha. <laughs> What we're doing is we're gonna go through the journey of Kao Kombucha and make some kombucha. And drink some. And drink some kombucha. Yes. Oh, I love kombucha. I really do. I really, really like kombucha. Like, I think it's a fantastic replacement mm. from beer, personally. 100%. Like, just curious. Have you seen a conversion from people going from alcoholic beverages to kombucha? Just out of curiosity. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like uh, one of my mates, he used to tank quite a few beers during the week and uh, now he sometimes just has kombucha or alcohol-free beers. Like he just like changed his lifestyle and the kombucha is like, it's like a beer kind of, like wow. without alcohol. And uh, usually when I come to barbecues and if I have like heaps of kombucha with me, I've got a few mates that don't like like heavy drinking. So they go on the kombuchas and they like pop like four or five kombuchas in wow. one evening. Gotta be careful, you know, probiotic. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Yeah. So Carl, you've been running this business. Let's go through the history here. If uh, you were on one of the audio podcasts, like in one of the earlier episodes, Let's just go through that journey again. So what, how did this all come to pass? Like, what's the journey? Okay, so, um, you know, Josh, my business partner, right? Yes. So yeah. bef bef before, hi, Josh, yeah. <laughs> so before we actually, before he came into the business, uh, we were always like going out, um, eating out. And we always thought like, man, it would be so nice if there would be something healthy. And uh, usually you only have like water in like um, grilled or wherever, right? It's like water or juice and juice is like absolutely full with sugar, like 13 grams of sugar. And uh, it's like, there was just no option. And then I heard about kombucha. I was like, what is that? Wow. And I was like, I heard it multiple times. And then eventually I had uh, the opportunity to visit one uh, kombucha company in Margaret River. So I got some kombucha. I tried it and I was like, hey, interesting. I didn't, uh, I wouldn't say I liked it, but I was like, that's interesting. And then I checked, so, hey, barely any sugar, taste not bad, you know. And then eventually I, uh, I kept on drinking. Like after these, uh, I had two bottles. Um, and then after that, I had some more kombucha. And suddenly I was like, hey, it was really good. And uh, I always wanted to become self-employed uh, mm -hmm. or have my own business. And then uh, I was at a party um, talking smack. And then... <laughs> <laughs> Saying like, oh, I'll become a kombucha brewer. And then a friend of mine said, God, you should really do that. And I said, oh, man, maybe I should. <laughs> yeah. So I started brewing some kombucha. And then a friend of mine said like, hey, why don't you sell the scobies? You know, while you get to the stage where you can actually so what, what is produce a, some uh, kombucha. What is, yeah. what is a scoby? Like, what is okay. it really? So here we go. This is, this is a scoby. All right. So and what? it's an abbreviation for symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. Wow. It's a cellulose. Oh my gosh. It's a big circle thingy. Yeah, it's like you can touch it. It's a bit like, it's, it's kind of disgusting the first time, but once you get used to it, it's quite funny. So it's, it's just like a... It's a cellulose. It's like it's produced by the bacteria. Cellulose. Yeah. Um, wow. So that is produced. Can you, can you rip it in half? Yes, you could. Wow. Okay. So it's, it's just like a, like a spongy type of like jelly type feeling thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like, um, wow. touching a stingray. Oh. Like feels pretty much exactly like that. If you touch like a scoby in, in kombucha underwater, <laughs> right? It's like as if you're touching a stingray. It's like kind of slimy, like right. soft, wet. On um, the surface of its skin. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Very interesting. And how, how does it get its circle shape? That's because uh, we make them circles. So imagine, so if we would make kombucha in this jar mm -hmm. um, and the water level or the kombucha level would be here, the scoby would become square. 
based on the, 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 the shape of the, the yeah. jar. So we choose to have like, because round just looks really nice. So we make our scobies that we sell um, in round glass jars. Okay. So it's like no, um, yeah, no plastic, etc. Right. So okay. if you would grow one here, it would be square. So you're making these scobies, your friends like egg and you're like, come on, Carl, you should sell these things. You're making, yeah. you're making the drink. So yeah, I'm, I'm experimenting on like bringing a drink out, but there's heaps of costs involved in getting a kombucha company going. And then a friend uh, of mine is like, hey, why don't you try selling scobies? And I was like, all right. So I went to a shop, bought the jar. Um, I had already scobies in the kombucha and then I just wow. put things together, went into the garden, put everything there, <laughs> made a, a picture with my phone, put it on eBay. And it's like over the weekend, I sell like four kids. I was like, oh, nice. <laughs> it's like, that was, it looks, it looks so bad. It's like, and it's still sold. I was like, hey, there's, there's, uh, there's a market. So organic. So yeah, super organic. organic. It's like That's so it. cool to test a product. Just like if you can put, if, if you can sell it on eBay, where it's like everything is so ridiculously cheap. If you can sell it there, you, you it may there. have some something Potential. really good. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. So you you started with just not even creating a website. You used the marketplace just to just to test to see yeah. if this is even going to happen. Absolutely. That's fantastic. That's like it's. I've been lucky that I just had the idea to do it on eBay. I was like, hey, let's try it there. And then I sold some on Gumtree, etc. And it took me actually ages until I created a website. I was yeah. like a little bit lazy and you know always like. Um, anxious about so, oh, how much it's going to cost to build a website. Yeah. I did not know about all these things. And then I came across uh, like Shopify and you can create your own website in three hours. Yes. And I was like, yeah. you don't have to pay $15,000 to have a website. And I did that, obviously. Uh, oh, and I think a day later, I had one sale also. That feels so cool. So good. So, so good. good right? And then yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You get the first one is like, oh, uh, but it's the first one that you just you just know it works. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That's such a nice feeling. Yeah. Definitely. So with with selling these, it it was it's it look to be honest, it sounds like it's a really low hanging fruit. It's like it's a really it easy was to get into it this was at that time. Now it's a bit more tougher, but it definitely was a low hanging fruit. Is it is it tougher now because there's more people in the space, or is it tougher now because there's just less demand? Like why is it tougher now? Um, so there is, I believe, a little bit less demand if you go to Google Trends. Uh -huh. and just check how often is SCOBY Googled. And over the last three years, it went constantly like slowly down, down, down. Wow. And there's more competition coming up, up, up. So you just have to like uh, be very competitive in the yeah. market. Um, do you mind if we start making yeah, everything? So we're going to make we're going to make some kombucha. So I, I've, I've always wanted to see this get made because frankly, I think it's just an amazing product. I've been drinking every time we run an event, we always get Carl to bring like 60 drinks to the events and they always are gone by halfway through the night. They're all just get drunk up. And this, this is usually what we're bringing in, right? Like yep. this is the, the jar that comes through and it, can we have one? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, I was actually like, oh, I'm a little bit thirsty. I am too. It's great. So cheers. cheers. Oh, so good. It tastes like, it tastes like a... Kombucha? <laughs> yeah, but kombucha, I'm trying to think of something that kombucha tastes like if someone's never drank it before. Um, like people spice. say apple cider vinegar. But I find that it only tastes like apple, apple cider vinegar if it's really, really sour. So now this is like a fairly good balanced mix where it's actually not so sour. Has a little bit of sweetness in there. So it's like nice to drink, yeah. um, but still I can not taste, pumped with sugar. I can taste like that apple flavor he's talking about. It's, it's definitely there. And it just feels, it just goes down so easy. Mm. It really does. That's why my friends, they just get on it on like barbecue and say, because it's like kind of like yeah. a beer, you know, it's fizzy, it's beer not too, the, not too sweet. Power. Yeah. And you, know? you can drive later. Yeah. It just, I don't feel like that hit when you get dizzy. 
and you start feeling the tipsy feel. I don't like that feeling. Mm. I might sound like a pussy, but I really don't like that. <laughs> I love that, that feeling, <laughs> but it's <laughs> but I, I love having a driver license, you know. So that's that's true. Yeah. So yeah. It, it hits the hits the nail on the head. So. Let's. How do you make okay. SCOBY? Cool. I'll, I hope I didn't jump oh, the gun sure. with uh, getting started, etc. Yep. Okay. Uh, so what's the, the what's the things we need to make this? Okay. So in order to make kombucha, obviously you need uh, your superstar SCOBY and enough starter liquid. The starter liquid is actually um, one of the most important things in the whole process. <laughs> that must be sour enough and really potent, like filled with the probiotic bacteria. Okay. Um, so how good much? quality starter liquid is. A, very important. How much liquid is that in this bag? That is approximately 800 milliliters. Okay. Uh, so you always try to use 10% uh, of the kombucha starter, which is just super strong fermented kombucha. So 10% of super strong fermented kombucha mm -hmm. and 10% uh, of uh, tea mix. Now, oh, it, so yeah, exactly. So what we do to make kombucha is uh, we'll cook up some tea mix it with sugar, mix it with the bacteria, and then it starts fermenting. Okay. Now, if we... Do you need this? this, this is yes, yeah, 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 we, we need okay. that, we need that. Um, so if we would boil up eight liters, that's an eight liter jar. If we would boil up eight liters of water, that would take four to eight hours to cool down. All right, let's bring that forward. Yeah. Okay. So, and uh, we have just designed like a, a little bit easier process on actually how you could do it. Okay. Um, I'll just bring that uh, to boil. So we have the sugar and tea in, w in one of these pouches. Oh, cool. So you've kind of already done the mix. Nice. Yep. So it's, it's the perfect amount. Like you usually use um, 40 to 60 grams of sugar per one liter and okay. so, like, four oh, to, so s and four to six bad. grams. Four to six grams of uh, black or green tea. Now, when I started, why do you use tea? Um, because this is what the bacteria needs to feed on. So it only works with this uh, the uh, Camellia sinensis plant. I hope I pronounced it correctly. This is the plant that is used to create a green, black, white uh, tea. Okay. So all of these teas are all coming from the same plant and it will only work with this type of tea. Now you could switch to rooibos and you would have one or two good brews, but then it would eventually turn bad because it misses the tea in and the coffee in that's in the tea, mm -hmm. because this is the food for the scoby, like the sugar and that stuff is the, yeah. Amazing. Awesome. So all we have to do, like the, our um, kind of like uh, easy process is simply, you take the tea. So how much water is Oh there? yeah, all right. I'll just fill it up approximately two thirds. Two thirds of what? Um, like filtered water. Okay. Yep. So it works with tap water as well, but we prefer filtered water. If okay. you can, use filtered water. Okay. Um, then you just fill it up two thirds full. We'll put that in boiling water, let it steep for 10 to 15 minutes. And uh, then we will take it out and put the sugar into the hot tea. Okay. And uh, once the sugar is dissolved, we will dump the sugar and the tea into the jar and we will check the temperature, which we will soon know once I stick the temperature strip onto the jar. Okay. Um, and if it's uh, below 30 degrees, yeah, if you could help me and uh, open the pack, yep. maybe just show what's in the pack while I mix that up. So yeah, we'll put um, the temperature strip on the jar and that way we can check it that it's not too hot in order for our SCOBY to put in there. Okay. Because if you would mix the SCOBY with hot water, it would obviously kill the SCOBY. It only survives up to 42 degrees. 42 degrees. Yeah, and this only like a so few this is, hours max. This is pretty much a living organism. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Wow. Looking after nature. That's cool. I'm, I'm done with this. Oh, wow. There's so much stuff in here. Yeah. This is, what, what's this? That's uh, pH strips. Oh, okay. pH strips. Yep. So they are just a fun thing to have. Temperature gauge. To play a little bit around. Oh, marketing material. 15% off when you buy next time. Ooh. Yeah, we look after our customers. I like it. Yeah. And eight liter kit. Oh, okay. So this is how to make eight liters and you got like all the examples. Yeah. 
of your info in there. I like that. Yeah, like kind of infographics. It's just so easy to understand if you have pictures with it. Plus, yeah. divided in steps, people don't miss out the steps because if it's just text, yeah. People don't get too excited about that. Ah, uh, no one likes to read. I don't like reading, so. So, okay, so we're brewing, we're, we're yeah. fermenting, or what, so, we're, yeah. we're Just checking the time, so we'll leave that for 10 minutes. Okay. Preferably, if you do it at home, use uh, like a pot and put a lid on top. That'd be like ideal, but that will work too. And we have no flies here around, so we don't run any risk of uh, any contamination. Yeah. So cool. that is all easy peasy. So tell me, like getting getting this all together, we're gonna pause it real quick. Hey, what's going on, little guy? <laughs> we're doing a video. And we're back on. <laughs> so in like, this whole process that you got going on, like mm -hmm. it's a lot of steps. It's a lot of development. You've made the scobies, you sold those, they went through. What, how much time did it take you to get to this stage? Like to get the product and then finding the right product for the jars and then the bottles and then the teas. Like how did this all come around? Like it's- uh, A lot of time. It's a loaded question. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it just, Bit by, bit by bit. So first thing was uh, going, to came, uh, going to Kmart and buying a four liter jar. Well, wow, that's like I, I, back in the bay. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was the basics. Four liter jar, then ordered some uh, packages. Like now it's all branded and really nice. Before it was just a brown, t uh, brown bag. And uh, I'll put the sugar in and sometimes the bags would um, crack and the sugar would be everywhere in the jar. And obviously I would always replace whatever was broken so it's like top customer service that's where we um yeah are we just like if something goes wrong we always replace what's uh broken yeah exactly so, so you, you started with brown bags did you get those brown bags from like down the shop did you go them overseas like, uh, down the shop okay yep local uh down the shop sugar as well just went to coles woolworths um, bought tea from Coles Woolworths, like organic tea, loose leaf tea. Tried to source uh, straight away from the start organic uh, organic items, and uh, and then it started like slowly developing because um, if you stand still, you're you going, going backwards. backwards. So yeah. it's like we're constantly doing something. It was like white boxes. Then eventually, it's like, hey, yeah. it'd be nice if it's like. Because people love that as gifts. Yeah. So it's like before Mother's Day, Christmas, it just goes out the door. And if you receive a package like this, or the package like, you know how they were, uh, how they've been before, they're just like I white do. boxes. This was just a white box when you started. Yeah. And like, even still, like mm. you were growing and you were building. So just what, what difference did it make to your company? Like when it was a white box to this now branded box and I like the investment in the process. It's, it also like, Color it makes you feel better selling that because it looks good and you like, you just like stand more behind it. And uh, also it's actually much easier because um, yeah, if it looks good, you can make uh, good product pictures and pictures like good pictures to sell better than that mm. picture as simple as that. That's pretty cool, man. It's really, no, honestly, you've grown so much throughout the years and I love it. I absolutely love it. So what, where, why did you choose this type of design? Just where, where did the inspiration come from? Well, we thought um, my business partner, Josh, he's, uh, he's the brain behind all the design. Like he did really well. And uh, if I remember the idea was kind of like, okay, how do we show that it has an Australian touch because it is made here um, locally, of course, with some items from here and there, but it's made locally and say, like, how can we do that? And uh, we just decided to like make a better design of the box and um, kind of make this type of art. So if you're listening on the audio section, the type of design is like very Aboriginal type style uh, format. It's mostly black with uh, just symbols of colors of green and purple and is that like a type of maroon? 
So I don't know the best in regards to colors, but yeah. Oh, yeah, cool, so cool, cool. It's like different type of purple, I would say. So was, is it, was it Josh that mostly came up with this styling? and? Yeah, yeah. Together? I can't, to be honest, I can't even remember how he came up with that. But mm. as soon as I saw it, I was like, wow, this is so cool. I like it because I like Aboriginal art. I yeah, think yeah, yeah. it looks cool yeah. and I was like hi this is uh and then we uh he gave this idea to our designer and the designer just like created it that's amazing yeah so it's not it's not a copy of anything it's like just our like your own thing yeah like thinking of like what art exists and then say okay we made something similar so next it brings me to my next question is you're like building the team and because there was a period in in your journey where it was it was pretty tough and running it solo and then yeah building a team and like having someone with you like and and, and going through that process like just just walk me through that like for people who are doing it by themselves and then getting a bit scared to have someone like how did how was that so i 100 percent recommend to have someone else with you uh, as a business partner or as uh, just employing someone because if you do everything by yourself you get mad it's just so boring it's just oh it's, it's not nice so um, I remember it just eventually got like too much I had uh, a burst of orders and I was like I was a bit overwhelmed and uh, then I just looked for people who could help me I don't even remember how I did it I think I advertised on Facebook in a backpacker group and it's like all right got some work and there's like heaps of people coming and um some of my friends also helped me and one uh, employee i remember is sandra you met mm -hmm. her yeah oh absolutely awesome like uh super reliable and such a help and then suddenly i could work more on the business and not in the business which was beneficial and that made the company grow further wow yeah. so exciting and then just came on and you guys are now pretty much working in this in unison and moving yeah. forward together absolutely it's a little bit tough because if i would have uh, an employee it would be easy because i could just pay the employee and the rest is uh comes into my pocket yep. now as soon another person comes in with 50 50 then obviously you need to suddenly make double the revenue mm -hmm. which is challenging but we kind of got to it um and yeah now we're driving from there so does having that extra teammate on do you define who has what responsibilities do you guys go through that discussion that uh it's actually a good question so it naturally um developed itself mm -hmm. so josh was quite new to the business um and he tried to take on as much as he can learn everything um and he's very uh, sufficient in all the tasks that we uh, do in general business and then it crystallized that he's like very creative mm. so hence like for example the design work etc our website he's pretty much um yeah doing all the work on our website it's like it's all him like and it looks amazing yeah so um, he's been doing most like the branding and the marketing absolutely yep yep and uh i've got a engineering uh background yeah. so problem solving in the manual applications I'm really good at that. Yes, right. you and are. The, <laughs> and the cool thing is actually sometimes when uh, Josh does something manually, he's like, Carl, I don't like the process. That, that is not efficient. Please improve. And I said, like, oh, okay, think. And then I come up with something. So he's like good on pointing out things. And same as like, for example, he makes the design and he's really good at making it. But once in a while, I point something out mm. and then he's like, ah, and then like this is how we like uh, push each other to actually um, get like Better. best results. That's really good. That's a really it's like, healthy partnership. And, yeah. And it's like we are like uh, we are best friends outside the business uh, relationship. And uh, it's just it's so good that we're actually so different. Yeah. Yeah. How do you deal with conflict? Like, do you ever like butt heads really hard and that it causes sometimes a little bit of riff or is it do you guys just you have a a phrase that you know like it's timeout time or do you ever how do you is it ever happen 
Like, yeah, of course. Okay. Of course. Like, I think it would be weird if it wouldn't happen. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, <laughs> it would be. <laughs> and uh, I think we both, because we're already such long-time friends, we had already fights before the business relationship. Mm -hmm. So we already know, like, if something's not right, we just talk about it as soon as possible. It's so, like, we might stumble around a little bit angry, and then, like, after one or two hours, then we uh, speak from our heart, maybe a little bit, like, heated, mm -hmm. and then eventually it's like, all right, bro. I didn't mean that, and so on. And each um, just tells what's on their heart, and then we're like, all right, come together, best friends, all good. You know, that reminds me so much. Like, it is technically a marriage, because you guys have made a commitment to each other. It might not be, like, a relationship type of marriage. It's a business marriage, but it's still, like, it, it's a friendship that has to be able to go through ups and downs. And that's that's oh, really absolutely. shows a lot of maturity. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. It is, as you say, it is a big commitment because we're in there for, who knows, like 20 years, 30 years, oh, don't know. Love it. <laughs> Love it. So what are we at with our time with our tea? Um, oh, yeah, 10 minutes. Oh, sweet. Perfect timing. <laughs> nice. Okay. You reckon we can bring that to the middle? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll move this to give you the space you need. But I need to drop it somewhere. You need to put that somewhere? Yeah. Uh, okay. One moment later. I'm going to get a cup. Oh, I got something. I got something. You got something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm coming back. <clears throat> oh, good idea. Straight you in the bag? Yeah. Does it just need to go like that? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So what would happen to this? Can you reuse this oh, or you just you chuck can, it in the compost or what? Te technically, you can uh, reuse uh, the tea bag if you want to. So how many times, like we've, we've, we've boiled this up, 10 minutes. You can definitely see where it's drained. Oh, wait, wait, that drainage is based on the volume of the actual tea bag itself. Uh, plus it evaporates a little bit, you know, like usually oh, I always was fascinating by uh, making a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. You put the tea bag in and it's like nearly full. Yeah. And then you walk away because it's too hot to drink. Mm -hmm. You come back 10 minutes later and so much less in there. Yeah. I was like, what? It's quite a drop. It's quite a drop. <laughs> yeah. So how many times could we use this tea before it's considered uh, saturated or oh, dried okay. out? So you can't use this tea again. Like oh. you could, but then I wouldn't make uh, tea for eight liters. I would maximum make a tea for a four liter. So, but, so this is. Okay. So you put this in the, like the compost or something. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's good. That's Simple okay. as that. Yeah. Um, good. So, oh, I hope that's not too much because I have to put in about 340 grams of sugar into it. Let's give it a try. You reckon she's going to tip out a little bit? We could tip out some of it already into the jar. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I hope that goes well. This is very improvised. <laughs> Let's give it a try. Two guys trying to cook. Yeah. Mind you, Carl's a professional at this. Oh, nearly. It's all right. It's pretty good. Oh, I had the other day, we uh, had a live seminar. Mm -hmm. So when you buy one of our kids, you also get a live seminar. So once a month, we draw a live seminar. Ooh. Okay. And uh, it was live, so we couldn't cut anything. And... Perfect. Wow. Okay. Sweet. And I had to pour from a big pan into, the, into this. Went, went so bad. <laughs> but it was all right. We, we saved it. It was just a little bit. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not, not completely bad. Um, nice. So, yeah. I just keep on steering and hope that that dissolves pretty quickly. Um, while we wait, we can actually chuck already the cloth on top of the jar. Now, you could yeah. ask me, oh, why do you need a cloth? Well, why do you need a cloth? Well, what, what? I have seen that at your brewery, like you had cloth pieces. Is yes. It just... It's because it's a live culture and it obviously needs to breathe air. So you can't just lock it with a lid. Not that they're airtight, but still, <laughs> it needs some oxygen. So do we put the SCOBY in this? Yes, but only after we have put in uh, the tea because oh, okay. um, if you, yeah, you just don't want to burn the culture. Right, okay. 
Okay, I gotcha. So this, the moment you put it in here, it's gonna reduce the temperature straight away. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Hence the, the... Yeah. Would you like to put the temperature strip on the jar? Yeah. And right. super important to place it as low as possible. Okay. Because if you have a jar that's not completely full and you have it on top, you wouldn't be able to read the temperature. I'll be honest with you. I think you're going to be better at putting this on than me because I'll just stick it somewhere. Probably you'll be like, <sighs> no, just somewhere here straight. And then straight. Okay. okay. All right. Let me just do that. You could put it also sideways. That works as well. Because I'm assuming like if that is true and do you normally put it up and down? Yeah. As low as possible. Okay. It's quite cool. It's nice and thin. This is nice. I mean, who cooks in your family? You and your... Carl's married, by the way. Just recently married to a beautiful lady. In your relationship, like, who's the cook in your family? Most of the time, she. Your wife's... Who... Okay. Yeah, yeah. She cooks amazing. Like, wow. so good. Yeah. <laughs> That's really I, I do, like, once in a while, like, breakfast. Yeah. Bacon eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta do those brekkie days, my man. Yeah. Gotta do those oh. brekkie days. Um, the barbecue, I'll try to attend the barbecue, but once in a while she does even the barbecue, so... Wow. I am not complaining, that's for sure. Yeah, no, that's cool, man. So, like, this process, it actually, it just takes a bit of love and care, really, doesn't it? Yeah, Stir yeah. And this is like, um, we're talking and etc. Yeah, usually it takes like 15, 15, 20 minutes max, I would say. Yeah. Depends, like, how long you... How, long, how much time you take for your for yourself for your tasks etc that's nearly dissolved and this is the longer version of that process like mm. we have developed one that's even faster oh really yeah let me just super while well, this is still kind of like so, dissolving okay can i run you quickly yeah. through it all right so what we've done here mm -hmm. we've done already at our kombucha factory oh so that stuff is that stuff so what all, all you have to do with that is literally fill up the jar two thirds full with water, take this bag out, cut it open, put it in, take your scoby, cut the bag, put it in, done. Oh, wow. Yeah. So even though we're taking this longer process, you've already made products to make it easier. Yeah. We're actually the first, I would say, in the whole world that offers that. Really? Yeah. Guys, I'd get on this, seriously. I'm going to be, I'm totally like been on the side, but I, I've never known how to make this because it's a product that I know that's been out there and I, and I buy it at Coles and stuff. Yeah. Because it doesn't taste as good as when you do it yourself. Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure you haven't done it yourself, but ours is like homemade. Yeah, we yeah, like yeah, just yeah. use like the original kind of recipe. Yeah. So no, I'm, yeah. I'm down, I'm totally down with this. Like, cause I just got to find a place to put it and then just run this through. So like, how much does this cost? Like to get this product, put it in here, like get one kombucha kit. Like if I wanted to buy one, how much would that be? Currently we have it on sale, end of financial year. Ooh, very nice. <laughs> well, by the time you see it, it might be yeah, not on sale anymore. That type of <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we currently offer that uh, for $99. Well, that's not bad. That's really good. Yeah, and that includes like, so, um, yes, uh, sometimes people say like, oh, but I can get a, a scoby of gum tree and uh, I could go to Kmart and get a jar. It's like, uh, okay, let, let's go through this scenario. It's like you get a scoby from gum tree. Usually you get a scoby and they'll give you a drop of starter liquid. So you would have to start with like maximum a liter of kombucha first. Mm -hmm. And that would take approximately four weeks until you can actually make an eight liter batch. Right. So if your time is worth That's, nothing, yeah. then uh, you can do it. And then, so you have to drive to actually get your scoby or walk or etc. Then um, you have the problem that maybe not enough starter liquid. Now driving to Kmart, getting a jar. Kmart has only four liter jars. You can't get an eight liter jar there. You, or so once in a while they have some, sometimes they don't have some. Then you need to organize sugar. You need to organize the tea. And then it comes to when it's actually brewing, is everything going well or not? 
how do you know? And uh, what we provide is like um, aftercare. So when a customer bought a kombucha kit, they can call me directly and ask like, hey, I've got this question. I was like, is my scoby okay? They shoot a picture, send it to me, and I look at it. And like once you've seen more than 10,000 scobies, you kind of know it's like, yeah, this is good. No, this is not good. But it's yeah. like 99% of the time, it's always good. Like it's yeah. so, so rare that something goes actually wrong. So do you like have like a, a Facebook page or a group that like go through this sequence? Um, we actually recently created a group which is called the SCOBY squad. So like SCOBY, nice. SCOBY squad. I like it. So, and it's uh, for our existing customers. And the thing is, we answer our question as, as soon as we can. Um, but sometimes it can take one or two days. And when you brew, you like, you're like, oh, it's now looking like this. I want to have an answer mm. right there and then. And if you shoot us an email, we maybe answer only on the next day. So if they're part of the SCOBY squad, they can go into the group um, take a picture, put it up, and there's like other people, um, and so same minded, already experienced, and they can already say, like, ah, no problem, all good, don't worry, that's just... It's what it does. Yeah, exactly. That's really interesting. Oh, okay, let's chuck this in. Okay. I think that's really good to have Your building that community. Clean after that. <laughs> that's okay, oh. we'll clean that up. I think it's really cool to be able to build a community together in what you're trying to do. I think that's cool. such a value point. And there she goes. Look at that brown loving. Brown, yeah, brown covered loving. Yeah. Um, cool. Perfect. Um, so all we have to do. Can I have that rag over there, Ian? Please. Thanks, man. I'm just going to dry that. Yeah, with sugar, you probably will have to give it a little clean no after worries. that. That's cool. It's actually got a nice tint to it. It's mm. like it goes really nice and dark. Yeah, if you steep it for longer with a little bit hotter uh, water, it might be even more darker. And if you use a higher percentage of black tea, it would go even darker. Oh, nice. So, yeah. so um, you can actually get a really dark tint to oh, this. Oh, absolutely. If you use right, only black tea, it'd be nearly as dark as the bottles here. Right, so these bottles are quite, like these got a real dark half. If you're what if you're listening to the podcast, this has got like one of those old school yeah. glassy type. Would you like to ask me why they're dark? Carl, why are they dark? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> oh my god, that's not loaded at all. <laughs> now um so I didn't know but um the sun is antibacterial. Huh? The sun like the UV rays, they are yeah. antibacterial. So, and this is the reason why original- oh, Hang on, beers, sun rays are antibacterial? Yes. There are plants, uh, like water plants, that clean water with UV energy with the sun. They just run them through pipelines, like kind of like glass or transparent pipelines, and the sun is killing the bad bacteria in it. Oh, this is your engineering comeback, of yep. course. So yep. you would know this because and it's in your space. That's why normally beer, or traditionally, beer is served in amber bottles. These amber bottles protect the beer from the UV lights. Now, all, most of the beers that we drink now are already pasteurized, so it doesn't matter. They can be in a clear bottle. But if it would be like a, a beer originally brewed, not pasteurized and bottled, uh, it has lots of good probiotics as well. Oh. And same with the kombucha. So if you want to store it for longer and uh, leave it at room temperature to maybe get a little bit more fizz, um, highly recommended to keep it in an amber bottle so it is protected from the UV rays. So that's what these are called. These are called amber glass bottles. Yep. Which is the, gives it that dark brownie look of the bottle color. Because mm -hmm. you see these usually in like a restaurant and stuff like that. But I mean, they're usually just filled with water. But you've got them for... That's pretty cool. We want to soon bottle our kombucha in this type of bottles Ooh. to stand out because... Um, oh, as a branding thing? Yeah, this is yeah absolutely. Okay. You know how like the water was, no one wants the water, they just wanted the bottle. Yeah. 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 And uh, so we want to do like something similar. It's not as like completely different as was, but um, something different. Like I never seen this in a 
drink a uh, fridge anywhere in no, a coffee place. No, not really. No, because the only th uh, time you know a bottle like that is from probably beers. Okay, cool. So we'll give it a shot. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've put okay. in the tea. Cool. What temperature is on the temperature strip? I have no. I, I think is it the light, the light color that's been yep. reflected. It looks like twenty-two. Awesome. So it means it's uh, perfect. Okay. That's like 22 and above is the perfect brewing temperature. Okay. So now as it gets cold, oh, we're here. Um, like It's winter now as we yep. do this. So That's what I kind of <laughs> wanted to say. So it's a little bit cold. Um, in order to keep it at a higher temperature, you would need like a heat mat. I thought I'll bring one just to show. Yeah, um, yeah. And this heat mat has like an adjustable wheel. It's uh, not a thermostat. It's just power output but it's like super weak on purpose and it will just keep it approximately at that temperature 24 26 degrees okay. um, and if you would be living somewhere in um, let's say Tasmania I would also put a towel around just to keep, keep the heat trapped right I see so it's it's just mainly because if it's too cold it starts to die uh, it doesn't start to die but it gets dormant and then it doesn't ferment and then it takes much longer to get your kombucha Right. Which will mean that you will have to buy some kombucha from Coles or somewhere else where you spend money. So sometimes it's a good investment to have a heat mat because you'll much quicker have your kombucha ready and you don't need to go for the shops. This guy knows how to sell. Oh my God. Well, okay. it's, uh, it's like, <laughs> nah, like it's, it I, I want totally uh, people sense. have the uh, benefit of it because it's so annoying to wait for something like four weeks if you could have it already one and a half weeks. See, like, I totally see the value poor position, like why you say it's like a hundred bucks to make this because you're cutting out four weeks of time. Yep. It's, that's, that's super affordable. Mm. Okay. okay, so what's next? So, temperature is perfect. And now we go to star of the show, the SCOBY. Mm. And uh, simply rip it open and dump it in. Nice. So what's all the little phlegmy bits? No, it's not phlegm. It's like all the little, the little floaty bits. Like the only way I can say it is like this. Yeah. When my son, now my son's two years old, when he drinks something and he's mm -hmm. had a potato chip and he takes a drink and then he <laughs> pulls it back, there's little floaty bits, you know, <laughs> like that's the only way I can describe yep. these little floaty things okay. in here. So what are these little things that are floating around? Because at first you think, oh, that looks a bit unhygienic. Yeah. So nothing to worry about at all. I know it looks a little bit funky, but that is just some yeast strains. Yeast strains? Yeah. Oh, so so like it's grain. like, that's good yeast because sometimes people think like of bad yeast, but in kombucha, no, it's actually the good yeast. Oh. And um, it will eventually form a scoby here on top. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought scobies form at the bottom. No, no, no. Oh, so, the the, so the scoby <laughs> will form on top in order to protect itself from foreign stuff coming in. Oh, so so it will have the shape of the glass as we talked uh, before, hey. but it will have it on top. So now once you brew your kombucha, it's important to not to disturb it. If you disturb it, it's not that bad, but preferably okay. don't disturb it. Right. So, yeah. So if we sit this here for, like how long do we, so this is a timing now. So mm. how long does this SCOBY, not SCOBY, this kombucha setup need to stay here before that formulation process of a SCOBY on the top of the water begin? Or okay. You would see a wooden, if we keep it at 22 to 24 degrees, we would see a SCOBY forming on top, like a really thin film, within uh, approximately four to five days. Four to five days, sometimes okay. Much so quicker, like sometimes a little bit uh, okay. slower. And uh, the whole brew, if you keep it at 24 to 26 degrees, would be finished in one and a half to two weeks, awesome. depending on your taste. Like for example, if you like it on the sweeter side, it will be finished quicker. If you like it on more sour side, you would have to ferment it for a little bit longer. Oh, so a quick, sweet approach. Is it because it mixes with the tea, with the scoby, and it still keeps us well, like a sugary type? The longer it ferments, the more it loses its sweetness. And because it consumes the sugar, 
it creates some alcohol, but just the tiniest amount. And this alcohol is actually consumed by other bacteria as fuel um, and creates like healthy acids. Right. So the longer you let it ferment, the less sugar you have in your kombucha, the more sour it tastes. Oh my gosh. So it's like, it really depends on to you. It's like, how do you like your kombucha? And that's why it, I find it like so good. Once you have made your kombucha yourself, it always tastes better than in the shops. Wow. Because in the shops, it's, they just designed this formula for like a variety of people. And everyone said like, yeah, it's, that's probably the best. It's like, it's not bad, but it's not perfect. So it's like you're making uh, different... You make it. You make it original, but it, it does. If you want something sweeter or something a little bit less sweeter, mm. it's it's out of your control. So this is why generating your own is a better choice. One hundred percent. Okay. I yeah, see. you are in charge of uh, the taste of your kombucha. So let's let's get a little bit creative here, mm -hmm. right? So let's say in this kombucha setup, I see like there's the ginger and lemon, and then there's like uh, I think it's uh, like a raspberry or you got different yep. mangoes and you got different flavors. Super easy. How, how do you get that to be in this? Okay, so there's many ways on doing it. I'll tell you the easiest one, okay? Um, when you kombucha is to your liking, you simply take a bottle, put some uh, fruits in there mm -hmm. or spices. I know you said don't disturb it, but it's going to push it up Oh, there. for now it doesn't matter. Like the first oh. day you could put it there, there, oh, there, okay. uh, but then eventually you should like leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Um, so yeah, simply cutting up some fruits or ginger, etc., whatever you like, pretty much, as long as it's not oily. Ooh. It doesn't like oil. Yeah. What's, what's an oily fruit? What's Maybe avocado fruit? would be. Oh, avocado. Fuck. Okay. Right. Yeah, or I some know. spices maybe have, are covered with oil. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's like, oh, I wouldn't add olive oil to it. <laughs> yeah, good point. Or maybe olives, that should be oily. Yep, oil, yep. olive. So, but yep. strawberries, apple, pineapple, um, ginger, some other herbs, turmeric, uh, you name it. Like you can make up your own cocktail pretty much. You put it in, you close it, and you leave it at room temperature or preferably also on the heat mat when it's cold. You leave it for four days. Uh, even up to two weeks, some do even longer, and it will create some more fizz because it will actually infuse into the fruits and take all these um, tasty things out of the fruits. And the cool thing is, um, once it's done, you have it more fizzy, and when you actually eat one of the fruits, the fruit will taste like kombucha, not like a fruit itself. Really? Yeah, because it just took all the goodness out of it into the brew. Cool. So it would taste like, like just as kombucha. If it's wow. fermented long enough, it just takes all the goodness out of it and leaves like a... How, how, lo how long do you need to make that happen? That sounds really cool. Uh, four, four days approximately. Really? In four days you make fruit? Yep. All right, try that. Yeah. Um, have you seen the rubber somewhere? Uh, yes, I did. It's in, it's in here. There you go. Awesome. Yeah, we'll put always like a... So you got like a lucky band that goes over the cloth piece. Yeah, just to secure it. And uh, yeah, it's very important to have actually a really tight woven uh, cloth, not a muslin cloth or cheese cloth, because you don't want any insects to come in. Mm. Yeah. And another thing, so when it's done like that, I would actually put a little bit more water in there. Just to so it's, it's kind of up. finished, yeah, and you just top up some water because we just eyeballed like two thirds. And so you put some water in, so it's pretty much goes to the top, but you can even leave it like that. It'd be totally fine. Wow. And that's how we make kombucha. Yeah. Ooh. So cool. So just tell me, just going back to business a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now this business you've been doing it for now, like you've seen how kombucha has been in a space where it is, it is a growing community. I think it's still growing personally. Mm -hmm. Like, what's, where is this going? Where do you think kombucha as a community, as a product, as, a, as an arrangement, especially with what you're trying to do, mm -hmm. where do you think that's going to go to in the next couple of years? I think it will probably be similar to the last two years oh. that we had. Okay. Like, yeah, um, when I just started it, 
I heard many times people saying, that's a fad. It, it's going to go. It's gonna... But I don't think so because um, in general, the whole environment that we have now is uh, people trying to be more and more healthy. Mm -hmm. So as long as that is going, kombucha is here to stay. I agree. Like, like And yeah. a super good indication for that is Woolies, Coles have kombucha in store. Yeah. And, and that is, yeah, it used to be, uh, I think one and a half years ago, you couldn't get kombucha in uh, Coles or Woolies. Now it's there. So it's like, if it's in Coles or Woolworths, it's here to stay. Let's be honest. Like the health industry is really pressing on sugary drinks and they're really trying to like, they're trying to kick them all out altogether. Mm -hmm. It's quite clear. They don't want them in hospitals anymore in the, in the, um, in the racks, in the, yep. um, what do you call them? The, uh. Um, machines. Yeah, I forgot what it's called. The, um, what they got? What are they called? Bending machines. Yes. So, then, so I'm just looking at one of our teammates who's from Japan because bending machines are everywhere. But this is something also because they recognise obesity is like a legitimate issue in Australia, mm. and the convenience of beverages is still one of the factors that plays a role, and they're always looking for a substitute to replace the sugary drinks. Like this obviously has pretty clear opportunity for market share and 100%. growth in that space. And some giants are actually jumping on the train, like Lipton. Oh, wow. Lipton has a kombucha. I was like, whoa, I tried it and I nearly spit it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh sorry. Am I allowed to say things you like that? You can say whatever you want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, was, it was horrible. <laughs> like, yeah, they. Just, I don't know what they do, but if you read the label, you kind of can... <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can actually see that it's like, that's not real kombucha. They add probiotics after. Oh. And it's like, something dodgy is going on there. And so it they... doesn't really taste like kombucha. It's like... It's like mass-produced material. Yeah, it's okay. not nice. Like, and there's like, few kombucha brewers, they make nice kombucha. But it's probably a handful in Australia. Mm. Like, it could, be, it could be way more actually, but they're more local and they haven't migrated yet. So it's like, it's like breweries, but it's just like kombucha breweries. Mm -hmm. yep. And this community of kombucha breweries is, is, is working with alcoholic breweries and they're all, they're all your guys are also building it. So there's, there is clearly a community yep. around this. All right. Because I honestly think if, if this continues to grow, like, I mean, I'm forever going to be a fan. Sorry, everyone out there, but I really am. And how then, how can this become into the hands of more people because I don't think it's a fad. I think it is here to stay. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you see it being in more people's houses? Or like, how can we get, how do you see Kyle Kombucha's product being in more houses? Word of mouth probably is a big one because I heard about kombucha from someone else. Like saying kombucha, I was like, what is it? I said, like, oh, it's fermented tea. I said, like, what is fermented tea? <laughs> so, um, so I think this, that's just a big one. And obviously you can push through advertisement and actually explaining people like, oh, you can have a substitute for sugary drinks you, and mm -hmm. like healthy substitutes that actually um, promote uh, gut health. Mm. And I said, like, wow, that's amazing. That is really good. Carl, thank you so much for coming online. Like just for those people who are obviously in the product space just like you and building their businesses and, and pushing through, building the grind. If you wanted to give them some support or advice in how they could continue their journey, what's something you could think you could share with them? So if they have already started a business, keep going. <laughs> Just keep going. Just keep going. Yeah, keep going and uh, try to grow. Yeah. Is Wise that, words. Bro, 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 bro. <laughs> Not the smartest <laughs> advice, but it's like, well, what else you got to do? You have to learn. You have to uh, like develop yourself, um, go out of your comfort zone, which I have to do a little bit more. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, isn't it? Wonderful. Thanks yeah, so much, awesome. Carl. Cheers, Thank mate. You, See you guys next time.